Hey guys, Trip here, and I can't stop playing Oblivion. I think I have a problem. I know it isn't objectively the best Elder Scrolls game ever made, but I've logged more hours into this game than you can possibly imagine. Since middle school, games have come and gone, but I always come crawling back to Oblivion. I'm not entirely sure why. There's just something about the warm, inviting atmosphere of Cyrodiil mixed with the massive, constantly updating modding scene that keeps me intrigued. Seriously guys, I've been modding this game since high school, and at this point it's completely unrecognizable. My Oblivion is a hardcore survival RPG where you need to eat, sleep, and drink water. There's all sorts of dynamically generated quests and events, numerous farms and cities scattered across the world, as well as dozens of guilds to join. I can go to elsewhere and parts of Skyrim. I can even play the entirety of Morrowind updated in Oblivion's engine. It's pretty insane. So, at this point, you're probably wondering where I'm going with all this. Well, my obsession with Oblivion got me thinking of something I like to call my go-to games. The games I play when I have nothing else to play. The games I pop on automatically before deciding what I'm going to settle on for the day. I'm talking about my default games, the ones I can always come back to. I don't think I'm alone in that I have several games that I just always come crawling back to. I feel like this is the case for a lot of people, where a game will capture your imagination and never quite let go. So what makes a go-to game? What separates them from the games you rarely come back to? Well, let's take a look. I think a go-to game is more than just a good game. Games like Undertale, The Witness, Hotline Miami are incredible games in my opinion, perhaps even better than most of my go-to games. But even so, I never quite have the urge to sit down and play these games for thousands of hours. I have a diverse collection of go-to games, New Vegas, Oblivion, Spider-Man 2, the entire Jack and Daxter series, but there's a few things they all have in common. Firstly, it's worth noting that each of my go-to games takes place in an open world. I know that the industry has been saturated with mediocre open worlds lately, but when they're done right, they're my favorite games by far. As far as I'm concerned, a well-crafted open world will immerse me far more than any linear level-based video game. But an open world alone is meaningless. There needs to be life, detail, engaging activities, and most importantly, context. When I play a Jack and Daxter game, the atmosphere alone draws me in. These are games that have few actual side quests, but I can entertain myself for hours exploring the ancient ruins, finding magical technology, walking amongst the bustling crowds of a dystopian city besieged by biomechanical monsters. After years of owning these games, I've probably only completed the main stories once or twice. Everything after that is just exploring, role-playing, and making up my own little narratives. Compare this to a game like Mad Max, for example, which gives the player much more to do, but never really grabbed a hold of me like Jack and Daxter did. Max's open world feels mechanical, gamey, too organized and artificial. I'm constantly being reminded of mundane tasks I should be completing without having any sort of organic motivation. It may seem strange, but a well-crafted world without any side activities will hold my attention longer than a mediocre world filled with collectibles. So if it's not the quantity of side quests that keeps me interested, what is it? Well, it's hard to put into words, but in each of these games, the gameplay just never got old. I can spend hours fighting crime as Spider-Man, beating up criminals and swinging from building to building. The movement is so much fun and so fluid in Spider-Man 2 that I spend hours just going from one end of the city to the other. Sometimes I couldn't use my web swinging at all. Other times I'd set time limits on myself and try to beat my own records. There was always something relaxing about flying across Manhattan at breakneck speeds, watching the world blur around me. Quite frankly, the gameplay of Spider-Man 2 encouraged me to experiment. It encouraged me to engage with it. There was always something new to try, somewhere new to go. And the activities that were present always felt organic and natural, without forcing them down my throat. With emergent gameplay often comes emergent storytelling, perhaps the most important thing each of my go-to games have in common. It doesn't matter what I'm doing in my modded Oblivion or New Vegas. There's always very real, very present motivation to do everything. 
My character doesn't just delve into dungeons because the game says he should, but because he needs money to pay for food, water, and shelter. Quite frankly, this is a job, and he has to pay the bills. This basic motivation adds a whole new layer of storytelling and context to everything I do in the game. Something simple as going from point A to point B is a story in and of itself. Just going from city to city is a journey filled with deadly bandits, disease, and cold, rainy nights. I have to make sure I've brought enough food and water to last me until the next town, unless I want to go out hunting in the even more dangerous wilderness. Regardless of what happens, each action I take in the game becomes a story in its own right. Without even touching pre-made quests, I've already entertained myself for hours. This emergent storytelling is enough to make me sink hundreds of hours into a video game. So let's narrow this down. Put simply, there are three features that are essential in making one of my go-to games. 1. They're all open worlds, or at least have very open environments. 2. They all allow for emergent gameplay, unbound by the game's narrative or intended gameplay. 3. They all allow for emergent storytelling, allowing me to come up with my own little stories, situations, and motivations. These are the primary components that make a game stick with me for years to come, regardless of anything else. So why did I decide to talk about this? Well, I want us to understand what it is that not only draws us into a game, but keeps us playing it for years to come. I feel like games are unique in the way they draw us into their worlds. No other form of media can hold my attention as long as a video game can, and I think a lot of that is due to the interaction that's involved. All of my go-to games embrace this, providing me with the tools to build my own stories, to craft my own experiences within the unique and beautiful worlds in which I find myself. Games are often at their best when they embrace the things that separate them from other forms of media. A movie can never give me the same feelings of immersion or agency as a video game can. It can never make me care as much about a world or its people. I can never watch the same movie for a dozen hours at a time like I can with a video game. I think therein lies the heart of what makes a go-to game. It embraces what makes video games so special, providing me with an experience that simply doesn't get old, that allows me to have a new experience each time I boot it up. But hey, that's just my opinion. So what are your go-to games? What makes a game a go-to game for you? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Trip here. I'm back with an all new video editing tool. I'm still learning how to use it, but as of now, it's leagues better than my old stuff. Get ready to see more videos more often. If you liked that video, why not watch some more? I certainly enjoy making these, and if you like watching them, why not subscribe? Follow me on Twitter and Google+, and check out my Patreon for news, rewards, and other good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.